All right, ladies and gentlemen, he's doing the silk over there. Oh. Probably the word saying that he's doing the silk is not the right word because he's not a silk work. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Silk is done by the worms, but technically he's making the silk because when it's on the cocoon, it is silk, but you don't call it the uh, professional silk. It's winded on the cocoon by the animal. And that's going to be about two miles long by one animal in 10 days. And the animal is in there inside the silk cocoon. The worm. We feed the worms with the silk worms with the mulberry leaves, okay? You feed them with the mulberry. When they start eating, they have about 30 days. 30 days of non-stop eating the mulberry leaves and they change their skin. After the 30 days, they start winding themselves in a cocoon like this. It's not a stone leaves. This is a cocoon. Got, can you see the silk that is coming up? It is like the uh, spider's web. Think about one single, long, continuous filament that was done by the animal. And the animal is actually, right now, is trapped inside this cocoon. Normally, if this was a natural process, it would open up a hole and would fly as a moth. You know, they become moths. This is called metamorphosis. The body of the caterpillar transforms into the shape of a moth and they fly. But if they start flying, ladies and gentlemen, I cannot have the silk. You know what I'm saying? They break all the threads over there and you cannot unwind it. And let me tell you something, I need silk more than I need the worms. <laughs> so what he does is to put them into the water in order to harvest this. Put them into the water and they're already dead before they get into the water. And he touches them, yes, with his brush so he can start to take the tips. Now you were asking me probably how long the tips are coming. He's touching them with his brush so the tips are coming into his hand. But the problem at that stage is, I'll the rest that. You see, one of the filaments is so fine, like the spider's web. I don't want it that fine. I want it to become about 10 or 15 filaments to make one single strand. Because one of them, yes, it is nice, but it breaks. So you see this running filament that being collected on the other side? It's actually about 10 or 15 silk cocoons run over, come together and make one single group to become one single strand. You see that? So He's actually taking about 10 or 15 filaments in his hand, and it becomes like this. Can you see it? So they all come together in one single strand, and he will be also collecting this on the other side of the gadget, on the rolling, spinning part. And he is using a foot pedal to do this, and the silk comes off and off and off and on and on. You see? And probably, if you haven't seen this before, to tell Dawada, you would see that, you would think that this is water spray. Yeah. It's actually not the water spray, it's the silk that is flowing from there. You see those cocoons that are jumping out there? Yeah. Because they are unraveling. So they are not alive. The silk is coming off and it spins them. They're on. It's like unraveling a bobbin. Okay. About two miles long. Luckily, two miles. Yes, you know. There you go. And it starts to run. Also, you might actually take a look at into those into this wet and you can see that some of the silk cocoons out there are white but some of them are not if you see anything like this if you see anything like 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 this one there you see like this here that means this guy hasn't got any more silk it's finished it's all went out so you can it looks a little translucent because the silk is off and then you can start seeing what's inside. You start with the budget. We break one of those to show you what it is. Okay, he takes it off, and you can see the worm inside, the animal. There you go. See that? That's the uh, silk worm. It was 10 inches tall. Some of them are 6 inches, some of them are 10 inches tall. We're talking about 20 centimeters, 15 to 25 centimeters. And they get smaller and smaller, so they become that worm out there. And that, finally, when I unwind the silk, that becomes my, what do you call, side product. Yeah, the silk, silk worm. And the silk, Mustafa, durdur, tamam. Please touch the silk that he's right made out there, just fill. Or you can touch those silk right here. Or you can touch this. Feel it? Probably you will feel, 
That's a little frustrating that it feels a little bit like the horse hair at that stage. It's not like the uh, like we expected it to come to be. A little uh, rough, not like the silk. This is what they call the raw silk. Okay, look, it's so fine. It's so, it's so, sorry, it's a little too light. Although there is the worm inside. Look at this. You know, it flies. Two miles. Army knew it, and they made parachutes from this. Yeah. Romans knew it. They replaced this with the uh, horse hair. They made ropes out of this, and they cut the marble blocks with it. <laughs> See how marble blocks, cutting the marble blocks? Really? Yes, with a silk, like a saw. Silk saw. You know? And uh, what we do today is not that sophisticated. I think right. Well, or, or you can make a necktie. This is going to be taken next door, under the other roof, and I will dye this, wash this, dye this, so it will become soft, like you know. Even now, it shines beautiful, like nice, nice, you know, like a shiny, shiny material. In the light, you can see that it shines. You see? Yeah. That is your character. You see, uh, just a little bit of everything. We're not going to make you an expert when you leave the house. We just want to give you an idea. You see the red color in there? You come a little closer. You see the red color in there? It is pomegranate. Pomegranate? You know pomegranate? If it's going to be black, I use uh, walnuts, black walnuts. You know, black. This far end one in the, in, the, in the wet is saffron. You know saffron? And if it's going to be a little bit of, uh, little bit of like the uh, lemony color, I use turmeric, turmeric, you know what it is. Blue is from indigo. All of them are vegetable dyes, herbs and plants. What is this one? Well, it is myrrh. It's the source of the purple. I also use aubergine, you know, eggplant yeah, to make purple. That is a little bit more dark, like reddish purple. That's what I use it for. This is chamomile for this color. Also, my father, before me, he used to wash the carpets with tea, regular black tea, to make them look nice rich and noble, that, oh, he was calling them noble. Today I washed them with the uh, chamomile tea. Ah. It makes them softer, ah. makes them much nicer, beautiful, <coughs> softer and beautiful. Well, we're here for four generations. I'm the fifth. You know, we got a lot of tricks, techniques, <laughs> tactics. I'll show you some of them. Let's take a little walk over here. Let's <laughs> Great job. Your guide is, is actually my father's friend. It means that also we're friends, but he's more my father's friend. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> yeah, have you noticed? Oh, Lord. Never ending story. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you can come a little bit more closer because I would like you to see what their hands are doing. When you look at their hands, this everything becomes clear all of a sudden. And then so you can go home and you start pressing all the rugs you have in your office. You might start unraveling the silk and maybe. Yavash Yavash says, look, Yavash Yavash means slow down in Turkish. Yavash Yavash. Okay, Yavash Yavash. You see, that's what they're doing. Over and under, pull it down, break it. Break it, break it, break it. Just like this. That's, that's not a Persian nut. That's not a Persian nut. That's a turkey. That's a double wheel. You see, she takes it over and under and breaks it. Okay, let's break it a little bit more. She breaks it, but still, there is an excess part. You don't want to leave it long because the design goes blurry and you look at it. So she is actually using her scissor yeah, no, to I cut it. She cuts it yeah, and the pile yeah, stands it's, too. It's really, yeah. So many side by side like this will be the circle of the like cart. Yeah. And then you look it's to the back. <laughs> this is how you see on the back. Probably, you know the uh, how many knots, you know, like per square We rock men, we need to know. How many knots they're putting in every square inch? That's what it is. How many knots? This one has got 462 knots per square inch. Yeah. Yeah. And also another thing is, a rug like this, like the one that I'm working, about two and a half square meters, takes roughly four months. Yeah, I was just gonna 
by two hours a day by one person. The one who starts is the one who. So we learn how to grow silk in this country. Then we start to grow silk, especially in this area, the west of part of Turkey, because the climate and the flora was ideal for that. You need the mulberry leaves for this, you know, production. So we have lots of mulberry trees around the area. So that started, first of all, uh, by the uh, city government warehouses, the Ottoman Empire. And then the locals learned how to grow the silk. So in the houses, in small farms, they started to grow the silk. And how you... So, yes, so you have this. And you come to me, I give you the egg of butterflies. See this? The small tiny things and the butterflies in our eggs. So you put this egg like this on the paper in, to the bottom of it. And on top, you put the leaves of the mulberry, the fresh leaves of mulberry, and the uh, seeds of like America. The soaking you know, in March and April, and in May and June is the summer start. Right? The same thing for us. So we do this production uh, starting in the April. <laughs> Grandmother, blue color, how much could it be? I don't know. Or you have a fly carpet. Okay, this is the silk one. It takes about roughly six months by one person. Start and finish it. What about a bigger one? Okay. This is a bigger one. Look at this. What I do over here is, would you believe I work with the local nomads? We call them the nomads. Probably if they were in Canada or in America, you would call them Native Americans. Native, you know, like those are the people. I work with their daughters. I call them here, like her. I train them here, they learn how to do this, they go back to their homes, they make the carpets. If they want to bring them to me, I buy it from them. This is in the school that I was educated at, it's called independent contracting, you know. They do this in their own home. Flying, flying carpet. Yes, don't say that you've been to Turkey and haven't seen a flying carpet. <laughs> Parts of Turkey for giving you an idea of the colors and the symbols. First. Yok, günleri açıyoruz. Sırayı değiştirdik. Günlerden gidiyoruz. Siz açın hepsini. Ben sıradan açtım. Yakın açın müşterileri. Ellesinler biraz. Central Turkey. Beautiful. Bu nereden çıktı lan? Aç. Stone Fountain. East part of Turkey. Pergamon. North west of Turkey. East part of Turkey. Caucasian one. Another is part of the Kishi one.